medium fast test. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So if you've been following the channel recently, you'll know that we've been doing some tests with the UK Meshtastic network um, to try and basically test different modes. So the modes on Meshtastic are basically like lower presets, so they use the lower radio presets, but they're defined by the Meshtastic app. Anyway, originally we were using long fast mode, um, so we've gone over to using medium fast mode as a test to see what difference that makes. Now, you know, all these different modes have got their different kind of caveats, as I said in the last video. Um, long fast is like long range, fast data rate. So we tried medium fast, which is medium um, medium range, fast data rate, even faster than, than the long fast mode. The reason we tried this was just one of the kind of off the cuff suggestions of uh, one of the Meshtastic development team um, when I was in the Discord talking to them. And they suggested, let's just maybe just try medium fast and see if the increased data rate will actually improve the messaging ability of, of Meshtastic. Because the messaging side of Meshtastic is actually one of the things that kind of doesn't work, doesn't work that well. Um, I nearly, nearly said doesn't work. <laughs> well, I got a lot of um, stick from that last time, but anyway. So anyway, cut a long story short, after the video that I put out saying, you know, we're moving to medium fast, that's just me and, you know, the, the local group that I've got here and the people on my Discord. We all had a bit of a chat and agreed that, you know, it'd be a good idea to try medium fast. We've done it. It's been about a week now. It's a week tomorrow, I think, the last the video I, I shot was, was last Tuesday. So um, not quite a week, but, but what I've found, and I think most of you will agree, is that basically your node list becomes shorter. There's not as many nodes in your area. So that can be a little bit kind of negative for people. They say, oh no, I can't see as many nodes in my area. You can kind of expect that because it knocks 5 dB off the link budget. So you're, you're not going to see nodes that were just that little bit further away anymore. And that might be the difference between, you know, not seeing a node, seeing a node and not seeing a node at all. Um, so a lot of people have reported that, which is one thing. Now in my immediate area here, there's probably about five stations, something like that, that all switched over to medium fast um, after you know I put some messages out on, on long fast and said, we're moving to medium fast for a test, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, most of those have moved over and I can't really see any difference with, with messaging. Um, it's not really improved anything. Um, it's still very, very kind of hit and miss unless the signal strengths are very, very strong you can't really kind of do, um, you know, messaging over this. It's quite, a, I mean, it's fairly small mesh now because a few people have kind of gone. But um, yeah, so I'm seeing the nodes in the list, still seeing, you know, many, many nodes in the list. Um, not as many as before. At first there was no one, of course, you know, then as people kind of got the message, they, they flicked over to medium fast mode and, you know, the, it's, the node list started to fill up. But nowhere near as kind of big, as before. That could be due to the fact that some people didn't get the message or you know they've got nodes in places where they can't reach and it's difficult or they're just lost interest and their nodes are still running, a bit like helium kind of routers, that kind of thing. But anyway, all it seems to have done is shorten the range. Also the minus five dB link budget of medium fast has also meant that some sort of users that are in areas where there's a lot of kind of interference on 869.525 megahertz, you know, there's a lot of EV charges and other telemetry happening. Um, they're seeing interference there and that 5 dB reduction has just meant that they're not receiving anything now, which is really bad. So over the last week, I've been on my Discord and Empower 24-7 Discord, leaving loads of voice notes and giving my thoughts on all of this and seeing your response coming back. And the general consensus is that it, it's just, it's probably not worth using medium fast. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, <laughs> shoot me down, whatever. So for me personally, in this area, I've decided to go back to long fast because I don't think congestion's a problem. Um, not here, it doesn't seem to be a problem. There's not enough nodes in my area. Um, you know, there's quite a few, but there's not enough to sort of make you know, to cause this congestion problem. Um, we're not hitting duty cycle um, limitations or, you know, there's no MQTT flying around. Uh, it, there's nothing like that. So actually just changing to medium fast just means you're just hearing less. So I don't really see, uh, from my point of view, that there's actually much point doing that. If there was nodes everywhere, then maybe, you know, a faster mode would be better. But the problem is not congestion. And the more I sort of do experiments with this, I go driving out and I, you know, pitch up somewhere and just kind of see what, get closer to nodes in an area and just try messaging them and just see, you know, how it works. And it becomes, it's become really apparent that 
the messaging does work in very close kind of proximity so if you've got nodes spread over like maybe two kilometers three kilometers or it's you know maybe like you know two miles three miles something like that um basically it works it does actually work quite well providing those signal strengths are strong i mean we had a good sort of three-way conversation going um last night when i went to my parents um, location in hoddiston and you know there's a few nodes around there you guys know who you are um and we had a you know a little bit of conversation flying backwards and forwards and it was pretty good it was pretty snappy medium fast was good for that because it kind of sped sped up the the snappiness of the comms but you know it is reducing the signal strength um and everything else so this is the thing guys it's it's about signal strength the until meshtastic do something clever with the routing you're not going to get further than your immediate area you're not going to you're not going to be able to exchange messages reliably with you know further out than your sort of real home close home group so if you haven't got any nodes within an immediate area of you and one's you know maybe like four miles away and it's showing minus 125 db with with a signal to noise ratio of 20 it's a pretty much guarantee you're, you're not going to be able to message them so why can you receive the beacons? Well, you can receive the beacons because it's tiny amounts of data and it's also repetitive as well. I'm not talking about like, you know, people putting beacons on 60 seconds and all of that palaver that we had in the beginning. No, that was that was a learning curve, you know. We we did that and mainly because there wasn't any nodes out there. It just kind of all the nodes shot up and that became a problem. So we've had to kind of mitigate, you know, how much traffic is out there and the telemetry and things like that. But I don't, I don't see that, not here anyway. It doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. Everyone's using mostly default settings and no MQTT, you know, that, that sort of stuff. But it is very apparent that the messaging um, over hops and things like that, it's, it's very unreliable. And that is due to the, the routing algorithm that Meshtastic is using at the moment. And we know lots about this. I'm not going to go into details about it, but it, yeah, it just needs it needs some sort of clever, um, yeah, it needs it needs needs thinking about if we want to expand the mesh, you know, if we want to expand it further and, and message outside of our immediate areas. I don't really think that this system is is going to work for that. Um, I'll be real. I don't really think it's going to work for that. I think it's going to work very well in very close environments or strategically set up um, networks so say for example you've got a town you can somehow manage to get a node on the the church spire that's sitting right in the middle of the town and you can have you know five or six nodes around that area that can all see and all communicate reliably with that church node that node because you put that node in repeater mode and then all of the other nodes around just can stay in client mode. As long as they can see that church and they've got a solid connection to the church spire, then all nodes will be able to communicate because all the communications will be going through that church spire. And it work because that that's just been that's a proven way of kind of you know covering an area using repeaters. They're still used today with, with all sorts of you know two-way radio communication system. You have a repeater up a hill. You have a phone mast up a hill that covers a wide area. The whole meshing thing can be a bit of a recipe for disaster because you, you might not always want all of the nodes repeating everything. And this is what I've been trying to say recently. Just use client mode. Don't use repeater mode unless you really know what you're doing and you've got a, you've got a station that is going to contribute. Because repeater mode is weighted higher than any other mode. So basically, if you send a message out, if there's a repeater in the area, it will repeat the message before anything else does. So you've got to have, your repeater has to be in a very, very good position for that to work. Like I was saying, up a church spire, covering an area. If you think you can do that and you can provide coverage for an area, then you'll help your area out a lot by just putting something up um, that can that can kind of, you know, almost manage everything in a way. It's not, but it's, it's almost, you're routing all the traffic through that and you're preventing... Um, you know clashes and you know packet loss between between nodes so I think in a nutshell don't expect too much from this kind of system um, with regards to messaging the beaconing system however is fantastic and it still amazes me that you know 
this is it just works so well. Why does that work so well? It's because the data is so small and it just literally it, it kind of propagates through it will go across hops and it's been repeated. It's been repeated over and over and over. And, um, you know, so that's why you end up with a good beacon list, but you might not necessarily be able to do anything with any of those stations. Um, and that comes down to you, your own station, you know, make get a better antenna system, put it outside, focus on, on trying to communicate with the nodes that have got the strongest sort of signal strength to you and, and the best no signal to noise ratio or, you know, just a good signal to noise ratio is going to be going to be quite important. Um, not necessarily just the RSSI. Anyway, I'm ranting on. Um, <laughs> I've gone on for what 15 minutes here. But yeah, it's it's a fascinating thing. It's a fascinating thing, and it is not designed to be a WhatsApp replacement. It's designed to be a hobby thing. Um, well, <laughs> that's how I'm I'm taking it as. I don't know what corporate meshtastic is is intentions are for this, but I like it as a hobby project anyway because you can build your own stuff. And yeah, it's just it's just cool. If you want a reliable messaging system, I mean, you can do it with this, but you're gonna have to do some homework and you're gonna have to learn about how radio works. So that's about it from me. I'm moving all my nodes back to long fast mode. Um, and yeah, by the time this video is out, I'll be back on long fast. So I'll catch you there if you can reach me. The next video I've got planned is something interesting. So hold tight for that. Um, basically, a little teaser is, I've worked out that there's a few more frequencies we can use, RF frequencies that we can use for Meshtastic. And what I'm gonna propose is that we use some for just long range non-mesh um, messaging. So stand by for that. That should be hopefully tomorrow. Until then guys, I'll catch you next time.